All right, so as, as we uh, talked about, this build's a little different. Let me just show you the parts that are the same and, and the ones that are different real quickly. We're using an Antec case. Last time we used the Antec 300 Illusion version. This is the Antec 302, a slightly updated version here. Here's the box that it came in, 302. Uh, and there are a few things I like about this case and a few things I don't like about this case. Let me real quickly show you a couple of the differences. One difference with the 302 is that these front USB ports are USB 3.0 ports instead of USB 2.0 ports as in the older model. Um, one other difference is on the top here. There are little hose ports in case you want to use a water cooling system. You can have your uh, hot water coming out and your cooled water going back in there to cool the processor and your video cards. Uh, we have an exhaust fan just like we did in the other version. A couple other th uh, small differences on the inside here as I open it up between the 300 and the 302 uh, are that in the 300 case the hard drives mounted this way and in the 302 the hard drives mount in these slots um, this way instead of front to back uh, side to side and in this case um, to mount hard drives you have these little hard drive rails that we'll show you a little bit later on um, whereas in the other case they just slid in and had thumb screws I think I like that a little bit better but we'll see how these work out um, one other difference between this case and the other case is the uh, Antec 300 Illusion version came with a couple of extra fans um, this one, let me open up everything totally here real quick so I can show you. Um, this case, the 302, comes standard with two fans. The one on the top here, the exhaust fan, and this exhaust fan that's on the back. Um, it does not come with any exhaust fans on the front. But I bought a couple and we'll be installing those so there aren't any fans standard here to blow air cool air in over the hard drives but I bought these two Rosewill fans for about five bucks each that we'll be installing here on the front to blow air in so that's something else we'll be using here let me um, show you a couple of the other parts some things are the same some are different we're using the same Asus uh, DVD drive that we did before. We'll be putting that right up here. So um, nothing real special there. And these other two bays, we're going to be putting these little storage boxes so that we can store our uh, extra pen drives and um, DVDs and things like that. So those are going to slide in the bottom and we'll have some extra storage. Another difference, instead of using a hard drive to boot the computer, we're going to use an SSD. So I have a, a Samsung 840 series 250 gigabyte uh, solid state drive. We're going to use that as our boot drive. should be very, very fast. And I'll show you how you mount that in the case in just a few minutes as we go on. In this computer, I'm going to be using Windows 8, mostly because it's a lot cheaper than Windows 7 now. They're trying to push that and get people to buy it, so we'll be in loading Windows 8 Pro on the computer. Um, one other different component that we'll be using this time is we have here a Cooler Master uh, modular power supply. Modular power supply means that you have your main power for the motherboard right here on these cords, but all the other power cords that you might want to use are modular. You can plug them in here into the power supply but if you don't need them leave them off and it, it makes uh, the inside of your PC a lot nicer. Um, also this power supply is very very efficient. Um, it doesn't create as much heat and this is a 620 watt power supply. That's a whole lot more than I, I need. But this is called an 80 plus bronze power supply. should be very efficient. It's also an extremely heavy uh, power supply. You want a good heavy power supply. It's a sign of quality. Things that are basically the same as the last build 
We're using exactly the same motherboard, the P8Z77V uh, LK version of the motherboard will be sliding in. We're also using exactly the same processor as last time, the Core i5-3570K, so no difference there. Um, we're going to be using 16 gigabytes of Corsair RAM for this build. Nothing real special there, but one difference that you'll be interested in is instead of using the stock heatsink that comes with the Core i5, we have this aftermarket Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus um, CPU cooler that we'll be installing. And if you've never seen one of these installed before, this will be an interesting part of this build. It's a little bit more complicated, not too bad, but a little more complicated than installing just the stock heatsink. What this will do is uh, dissipate heat from the uh, CPU a lot faster so that we can overclock it a whole lot more. So um, that'll be an interesting part of this build. So next we're going to get uh, started and we're going to go ahead and pop the CPU and the um, memory and everything onto the motherboard. And so we'll end this section now. And